This show features adults using adult language. Howdy folks, I'm Caleb Sunstead, your host and game marshal. Sounds Like Crows is a podcast where a posse of nerds pretend to be cowboys. On the show, we improvise a story using the setting and system of Deadlands Reloaded, a role-playing game. Bringing it all together is the musical talent of Rudy Zuniga, who can be found on YouTube or Facebook. I have three older brothers, each one more degenerate than the last, and although they are deeply flawed, I still love them, and the world would be a very strange place without them. I hope that this show will in some way share what I have with you. Welcome back to the Weird West. Last time on Sounds Like Crows. The Crow Boys bested Cole Marston and his gang, using hot lead and a spoonful of their usual charm. It was then the boys discovered they had been conned. The ranger, Captain Amos Westfield, had set fire to the family home, then fled, leaving them with the nest burning, having arrived to the inferno too late to stop the blaze. It's about 4 p.m., and we see five riders on a hill. They are silhouettes backed by the fire of your homestead and your barn burning. We do a hard cut to your guys' faces. You're all lined up in a row on your horses, just sort of staring at the burning wreckage of your childhood home. There's a slow fade to the hoofs of the horses as they trot back into town. People are less receptive of you guys than they were when you first got off that train station. A few men are dead in the center of their streets. Uh, The sheriff's sons have been (laughs) shot at significantly along with the sheriff in the middle of town. And there's some people whispering, sort of, you know, closing their windows as you guys come by, closing their doors, that sort of thing. Where are you headed to? I hope the people are whispering, uh, is that Daisy Crow? <laughs> oh, shoot, that's Daisy that's Crow. That's Daisy, Daisy Crow. Crow. Oh, I'll be damned. That's uh, Daisy Crow. That's Daisy Crow. Shh, shh, is that Daisy? What is this bitch marshal? This bitch marshal is in his office. <laughs> the uh, You guys ride up, pull off your horses, open up, and uh, you can see that Cole and... Um, fuck, is Cole and Eugene locked up, you think? No, know, Eugene's, Eugene's fine. I mean, Eugene didn't do shit. Yeah, Dude. Eugene didn't even shoot, I don't think. He pulled a gun. So Harper's though. going there. We're going to the general store. Perfect. We gotta split up. We gotta get this done quick. How about for simplicity, just tell me how much money right now you wanna spend on supplies. I'd say like twenty five to fifty. Well, if if you give up fifty dollars worth of gold, I think you get enough food and water to last until the next town you reach. And what if you just write down supplies times five and anytime you need something, you can just use one of those up to say you bought it. So if you need rope, you can be like, I'm going to use one of those to say I bought rope back okay. in town. Cool? Yep. So you go to the general store. Abel and Harper dismount in front of the town marshal's office. They go up to the door. Door opens up. Um, Lucky trails behind them a little bit, kind of jogs up to catch up. And they open the door, and it creaks once again as it slides inwards. You guys come in, and you can see Cole in the back in a jail cell, laying down on a cot. He's got his 10-gallon hat pulled over his face, and Clay Marston is sitting in his chair near his desk, sort of just looking off into space. As you guys work your way in there, he turns but doesn't stand up and says, Howdy, boys. Uh, Harper kind of steps inside, takes off his hat before he enters the doorway, gives him a a nod and kind of a solemn look. He kind of walks in, like stands in front of his desk, Marshal, uh, something I've been meaning to talk to you about. Now, uh, I am sorry about what happened today. I mean, none of that was supposed to go down like it did. I'm just, I'm just going to be straight with you. I think it's about time you step down. I don't know about that there, Daisy. I've been the town marshal of this place for a long time. And one man's mistakes, well, they don't wipe out years of service. I've been here, what, three days? Sure. I've seen you cower away from a robbery in your very street. The driver of said caravan said she brought this to your attention before, and you lift it. I've seen you fail to hold your son's tongue at a funeral, leading to a shootout in the street. 
with five armed gunmen standing behind his back. Oh, mama got murdered. Now, I'm not saying I blame you for that. What I do blame you for is not seeing any of the clues or evidence that I saw. Make a persuasion roll. This is this is not Daisy. This is Harper Crow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a five. Well, who did you have in mind to replace me then, Harper? I don't know if I got many people in mind. I ain't been in town for a long time, but uh, I think these townsfolk probably got a good idea. I think you're right. It's been a long time. He sighs, stands up, extends a hand forward, his right hand. Says, I'm, I'm real sorry about your ma, and I'm real sorry for the way my boys acted. You're a man now. Ain't nothing like the boy I saw when you left. Harper uh, reaches out and gives him a firm handshake and kind of a solemn nod, and he says, Thank you. I'm sorry about your boy. I'm sorry uh, things went down like they did. Wish they didn't. I'm just glad he didn't take a bullet to the head. Now, your brother Abel's going to take him to Fort Bartholomew, and they'll hit him up with the prisoner train and send him on back east. So, uh, all's well that ends well, I guess. Cole in the background, laying in the cell with the hat over his head, goes, um... Shoo! All's not well that ends well. Didn't end well for me now, did it? And he takes off his hat and sits up and looks straight at Harper. Shoo, you boys should have killed me when you had the chance. Harper doesn't say anything. He kind of gives him a cold glare, that same glare that he gave him the, the day before. Or I guess not the day before, earlier in the day. He just says, remember, I never took a shot at you. Oh, I remember. And he leans backwards, lays down, puts the hat back on top of his head. You best be, you best be getting out there, Harper. I know uh, you boys got work to do. I'll let the town know about my resignation first thing. All right. Lucky walks over to his desk. That was unexpected, and I'm sorry uh, that had to happen. But as he says that, he pulls out his wallet and kind of unloads all the cash he has, probably around like $78. And he places it on the table and he says, I have a favor I ask of you. If you could, every single week, place a new uh, thing of roses and flowers on Mama's grave, that'd mean the world to me. He looks at the money, gets a little teary-eyed, looks down, and then looks back to you and says, It means a great deal to me, too, Lucky. Thank you, Marshall. And then he walks out. So Lucky and Harper walk outside the town marshal's office. Abel, you stay inside. Um, Cole's still sitting in his cell, laying down, 10-gallon hat over his head. And uh, where, where's the marshal right now, guys? He's sitting at his desk. The uh, He stands up, grabbing the keys from his desk drawer, and says, uh, Suppose you be want my son? I am. He walks over, unlocks it, and opens it up, and then wordlessly goes back to his desk. Cole sits up, puts his hat back on his head. Come on, boy. We got a long ride ahead of us. Where are we going there, Crow? Going to Fort Bartholomew. I'm going to take you to a prison where you can await out your sentence. Little town like this doesn't have the, uh... And Abel looks over at the uh, marshal for a moment. Facilities to hold somebody for a long term. Shoot, I reckon a man like you would just string me up outside, Abel, but I guess I'm going to take what I can get. He stands up, comes over to you, says, uh, going to cuff me or what? No, I figure if you're dumb enough to run, gives me an excuse to use the rope. Get walking. He gives you a half-hearted laugh and uh, walks outside. You can see um, Ellis coming down the road with some supplies on his horse. Um, Harper and Lucky are down. Well, they're not down. Harper and Lucky are on the wooden sidewalk as you walk outside. Abel grabs Cole by the shoulder to pull him to a stop and then uh, hollers out towards Harper. Harper, which way are y'all heading after this? After I drop him off, I want to be sure to be able to catch you. Well, uh, Abel, looks like the tracks are going off southwest, so... We'll just take that road as far as we can. I'm sure you'll be able to track us, man like you. All right. Now we're going to catch that ranger or some bitch. I'll give him a couple of days. Safe travels, y'all. Yeah, you too. Safe travels, crows. 
Abel, uh, you head off with him out, out of town. Y'all mount up and head out back southwest towards the ranch. Without Abel? Without Abel. Cool. He's taking Cole back to the fort. Sure. Yeah. Barth Malamu. It takes them all a takes them a little bit longer to set out. You know, Santa May. Do you guys say any goodbyes or anything? I think everybody I care about in this town's dead. There's a uh, another transition I think where we fade to the sun and then pan down as you guys are following the trail of the Texas Ranger. Harper, I think you're the best at tracking if you want to go ahead and make a tracking roll for me. Uh, I would be happy to. In which direction is this trail heading? Uh southwest to begin with. Well, oh, oh, that's shit. 18. It... Holy shit. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Oh, my Damn. We God. found him. He's right there. daisy <laughs> <laughs> has got a microscope, man. Sorry, plot. You still shit. get lost. Holy <laughs> damn. Well, I think that means that, I mean, you'll have all the information you can have about a Texas Rangers tracks, I guess. He's got a horse, you know, um, Mongolian bread, much mm. like Ellis's. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> is that yeah. canon? Do I have, a, do yeah, I have one of those? Yeah, it's canon, I mean, it's on Mongolian horse. horse. Can yeah, I maybe. tell? Where the hell did I get that? <laughs> Who knows? Is his horse fast? He's rich, dude. Uh, Who cares? His horse is is sturdy. His All right. horse is sturdy. It could be fast. Seems like an older horse, based upon what you can tell from <laughs> a 23. You, you know exactly how old this horse Eddie is. Eddie Falcon Feathers? Yeah, from the falcon he has. Yeah. Um, you don't. What you do find, though following the tracks for a little bit, That's maybe weird. like 10 minutes or so, is uh, a little bit of black ash on the left side of the trail. Almost seems like it was sprinkled down from the uh, the Texas Ranger, whatever it was. So he's trying to get us to find So with my, uh, with my 23 and five raises, yeah, uh, I look Four. at that and know that either he, like, he did that on purpose? The way it's placed, no. It just sort of seems like it fell naturally to the ground if you t- mm. if you take a look at it and inspect it you know i don't think you'd be able to tell what it was without making some sort of roll what'd you find down there daisy nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what do you mean it's just some ash i reckon probably a cigarette but who knows do you continue to track him during the night or do you stop and make camp well i reckon uh we need to make camp we're gonna need all our energy if we're gonna be hunting a texas ranger in the morning I mean, how far ahead of us is he with a 23 in tracking, you'd imagine he's about eight hours ahead of you. Can I tell if he was, like, really pushing his horse? For the first probably mile of his trek, he definitely was. And then now that you've reached that, he's slowed down for sure. It uh looks like he was slowing down a bit. I reckon he's probably going to stop for the night. Lucky wipes the uh, sweat off his brow and he says, I'm all for catching him, but I think I would like to stop for the night too. I need everybody to make riding rolls. I don't believe there are any modifiers to this, but I'll look it up. Failure results in being fatigued. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got it. I, Thaddeus, Thaddeus was, oh, he was trying to be cool about it, but he's fucking raw. Turns out he does not ride. Uh, that was double ones. He is. Oh, <laughs> yikes. I didn't get snake eyes, but I also failed. I was, I was talking How about did you fail? You got like the best riding so in other right right Harper was so focused on tracking that uh, he was kind of pushing it. Well, Lucky got a 21, so he was doing tricks oh. and shit. And <laughs> I was running circles around all you guys all day long. So who succeeded the writing role? Ellis Angel. and Lucky. Uh, Marshall, Thaddeus, and Cameron Harper. Both of you receive a level of fatigue from uh, riding after this guy. And this is going to just represent the la- next few days, to be honest, as no. well. No. No. Fatigue <laughs> means that you get negative one to all trait rolls, which means all ability and skill rolls, until you spend 1d4 days in a bathhouse or other similar structure. I do like a good bathhouse. <laughs> Yikes. In one this day. is rough. Fuck. That is rough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Pretty rough. Well, That's boys, time rough. to head back. So as you guys make your way on the track, it's about... A little over 90 degrees today. It's hot. Ellis brought you guys some nice water, but, you know, it gets hot real quick, even in the saddlebags. You guys are riding along. Who's taking the front here? I assume Harper is, because he's the one leading, but... Harper, how are you feeling today? I'm a little sore, but I'm all right. Yeah, Thaddeus has probably got his coat off hanging off the back of the horse, and he's got his shirt off, and he's got his big, raggly, vagabond beard, as he's trying to keep cool. 
And he just looks like he's not having any fun on this horse. There is hope on the horizon, I think. The sun is going down, and soon maybe the heat of the day will dissipate. But for now, it's going strong. Harper Crow, since you're in front, I need you to make a riding roll for me. That's a five. Since you made that roll, Harper, we need to make a separate roll. We need to make a guts check for your horse. What's your horse's name? Thunder. Since this is your special Mustang, let's say it has a D4 in guts. Oh, wow. As opposed to a minus two? Yeah. It's it's, pretty n- good. it's not a wild card, though, so it's just a D4. It's got more guts than me. That's a three. Directly in front of you, all the shadows are elongated at this type of day. Like, people's shadows stretch on for, you know, 15 feet maybe, you know. But you see a figure move directly in front of your horse, almost small enough to be like a fox or a rabbit. And your horse rears up hard and then starts to pull off into a gallop. You hold on hard, but you're going away from this thing hard into the brush away from the tracks. You other three brothers... Uh, just see this scene. You probably don't even see the small creature go in front of the horse. You just see Harper's horse take off into the distance. Hey, Daisy! So uh, Harper's going to look back. Do I see what it was? Make a notice roll. I will. I will do that. Please do. I mean, I feel like if we saw Harper just bounce on his horse full speed, we'd probably do the same thing. That's a five. It's a small creature. I do think you see a glimpse of it, even in the bad lighting. It's about the size of a large cat, a small dog, or a big, big rabbit, maybe. And it goes by at an incredible speed, 20 miles an hour or something, straight from bush to bush. It's hard to catch a glimpse. That's what you see. You head off. Ellis, you said the rest of you are heading on afterwards. Well, I'm going to definitely turn the tail. And Harper, before everybody starts following me, says, whoa, 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 Thunder just got spooked. Stay on the trail. And he just kind of rides off, let... Let's Thunder kind of run himself out. <laughs> Great, cool. You guys see him so take off. So we just like distance. stand there and we watch him run around like a, <laughs> yeah, like a maniac out in the field. Lucky well, probably pulls to a stop well, at this what, point. That's good and all that Thunder got spooked, but what spooked Thunder? I never seen Thunder spook like that before. Oh, uh, maybe it was one of them jackalopes. <laughs> a jackalope that is really? Yeah, they they're terrible. You're Kinda talking like... about a real jackalope with a, like a rabbit with antlers? Yes, Ellis. You got to get them with your blade and slice the throat. You've seen a real life living, breathing jackalope. And you think that that's what's out there. I don't know. I didn't see it. But something terrified his horse. You think it was just a coyote? Can we look around? Yeah, I think that's much more likely than a jackalope. (laughs) (laughs) Can you look around for what? Can you look around for what? Can we see if it's like taken off or anything like that? He said it got spooked. Uh, you can make another notice roll for me, yeah. I think you got to drink some more water there, Thaddeus. Uh, blows up his foot. 2A7? Yeah, you oh, see yeah. it scooting on past. I think you guys were headed southwest. It darted in front of you, meaning it's probably going northwest, and then Harper probably set off, like, northeast. So, it, yeah, you can see it moving through bushes, but I think it's too small to necessarily make it out. You can just see the bushes moving as it hops off into the distance, you know. Can Lucky fire into the bush he sees it in? Yeah, definitely. Hey, Thaddeus, are jackalopes known to be tasty? I never ate one before. Five. Five, I think, says it definitely has cover of some sort. You fire, and you don't hear any noticeable return for your action. In fact, maybe uh, it keeps going a little bit, and then you see the bushes stop moving altogether. Harper, uh, do you want to make one more riding roll for me with plus two since you made the first roll? That's a snake eyes. Oh, great. Oh, so, uh, Harper, you're trying to pull him in, and you think you think you have him calm for a second. You know, you're kind of patting him a little bit, you know. And uh, right when you have him, you think you have him calm down, you pull back towards the group, and it just bucks wild. You fall off, smash into the ground hard, and it takes off to just the west. Just had to get a Mustang. You your Harper. <laughs> <laughs> now, guys, don't worry. It'll be fine. I'll contain it. <laughs> Uh, Harper stands up and he like takes his hat off and uses it to kind of like dust himself off. Yeah. And he looks back towards the group and he just puts his hands over his head like, <laughs> "Well, shit, <laughs> you better get your horse." <laughs> Daddy better says there's back. a there's a jackalope up here. Harper's Great. just walking his way back. <laughs> like he looks like somewhere in between defeated and thinking that this is hilarious. I'm Great. going towards Harper. Yep. You ever seen a jackalope before, Harper? Did you just say jackalope? 
Yeah, Thaddeus has it in his head that there's a jackalope out there. <laughs> <laughs> I told him he's crazy. That would, and that would. And was got lucky out there, trying to taunt it out of the bushes, <laughs> slapping on his behind. <laughs> Craziest thing I've ever seen. Nah, shit. That was just like a, must have been a fox or something like I, that. I had to get out of there. Darting across the trail, probably a rabbit done got spooked. That's what I said. <laughs> shit. A coyote, probably. Ellis and Harper, if you guys just spend some time, I mean, you can grab a horse. You both grew up on a ranch. You don't even have to roll for it. It'll probably take 15 minutes altogether to go catch it and then come on back. And you're all grouped up again. How'd that jackalope hunt go? I'll tell you what. It's quick, whatever it is. And it's smart to boot. We had a rest for the night. I'll start a fire. The camera pans down from the sun and that cloudy blue sky that's barely peeking through the clouds up there. And it pans down to two figures next to each other, Abel on his horse and Cole Marston on his. And they're riding west towards Fort Bartholomew. Cole sort of sniffs, looks looks off into the sky while he's talking to Abel. Says, uh, I must confess, Abel, I did not expect to be alive today. But I am grateful for it, I suppose. I would have expected a little shit like you to see himself as much bigger than that. I figure you thought you had lucky dead to rights. (laughs) It's true. I did pull first, and I did almost take him down. Just because your brother's a lucky bitch doesn't mean I can't shoot. Well, Cole, ever since you was little, you always been a little shit. But you know what they say. It's better to be lucky than dead. They say that sometimes, I suppose, but, uh, you know, even if I was never a good shot, I never did get beat by my older brother. (laughs) Shoot, I wouldn't do that to Eugene. And you still hang out with him? Your brothers still hang out with him? (laughs) Man, you you folks is crazy. Abel's silent for a long moment and then uh, spurs his horse to push it up closer near Cole's. They're almost riding parallel. Whatever did happen between you two, I'm not sure I heard the whole story. All I heard was your older brother, Thaddeus, well, he whooped your ass and left town in quite a hurry. Cole, there are some things you'll never understand. One of them being what family actually means. To me, (laughs) it ain't just the boy I'm fucking. (laughs) Shoo, Abel. Hey, we never did nothing like that. Don't play with me. You're just trying to make me upset, all right? And you know what? I guess you're right. I guess I don't understand family. I don't understand how it is that you can let a person beat you and still call him blood. I ain't called him blood for years, boy. Shoot, your brothers are. I didn't see them turning no blind eye when he rolled down. He was fighting alongside you, wasn't he? Shoot, that makes him kin more than anything else. Abel's eyes continue to narrow as he rides on. His hands are gripping the reins, working him back and forth. Those leather gloves creasing and uncreasing, just making that soft creaking sound. You can see the tension begin to build. See, I understand what it is to be family. Shoot, me and my brother Eugene, my papa, we were doing all sorts of things together, all right, while you were off gallivanting around, being some sort of judge, I don't know what not. We were busy loving each other, all right, and not in a, not in a sexual way, okay? Abel reaches over to his left side where his shotgun is slung on the saddle. Listen, I he... know it picks it up and swings it like an axe handle and nails Cole right in the mouth. God, fuck, man. You son of a bitch. You got more? (laughs) Fuck you, Abel. That's what they usually say. The camera pans outwards and fades away. You make a, find a pretty decent campsite, set up a decent fire. You all cook some food. Some Mm -hmm. stuff Mm Ellis has brought out. Probably some cans of beans. Oh, yeah. That sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Almost exclusively beans. Almost and exclusive. cornbread. Ah, uh, yep, of course. Some jerky. Dang. That's not bad. That's a good meal. And that's all pretty fresh at this point. Only yep. a day yep. out from town. That's already, like, out of my price range right now. Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> that is, like, fucking shoveling this with his hands. Oh. It's probably been a while since he's eaten 
something that awesome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's like four day old jerky. And well, it might not be jackalope bread. lucky, but Harper says, "Uh, I reckon I can take third watch. I wouldn't want to take one of the first two. I'm pretty tired on account of the fact I got kicked off my horse." <laughs> Pretty late in the evening, uh, last watch of the night, or early morning, I guess. You're sitting with Lucky near the campfire. Um, what are you two talking about this time of night? I think we're just kind of like, like, just like reminiscing. You know, you uh, remember that time when you first brought the bottle in the house? <laughs> and then, like, uh, I don't know, we probably see other shit. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Perfect. As you guys are having this heartfelt, yeah. As you two are reminiscing and shit or whatever. <laughs> Harper, you see your duffel bag, your trusty signature duffel bag, start to like move a little bit on the ground. So as I look over there, I don't see anything like around it. You stand up a little, maybe, and take a peek over it. And yeah, you can see the back end, the hind quarters of some sort of creature out the back of the duffel bag. Well, the front half of it's inside the duffel bag. All right, I'm going to reach down real slowly, Yeah. pick up my rifle, Great. and just take a shot. Great. So I want you to make a stealth roll on that, opposed by its notice. Three. Three opposed by its two. So, oh, yes. yeah. Seven. It's a small thing, Harper. Um, small creatures get a negative two to your roll, so that brings it down to a five. But even though it's a small creature, you'd still hit with a five. And you line up that shot, and you should have hit, Harper. Everything in you tells you you should have hit. But when you pull that trigger, the shot goes a little over the duffel bag and slams into the ground hard. The creature lets some sort of unearthly howl out, you know, like a... And, uh... What was it? (laughs) And pulls its head out of the bag. And that's when you see it. A jackrabbit. With antlers, oh, it is a jackalope. It's a jackalope, <laughs> and Thaddeus is asleep. It yeah, really not is bad. a jackalope. Well, not anymore, probably. I mean, that that's, that's the thing. I have the hindrance hard of hearing, so I have a <laughs> negative two to notice rolls when it comes to sound. Well, make it... and I'm fatigued from getting the snake eyes. Okay, I, I'll I tell you what. Sunburn. I think that I think a, to waking up to a gunshot, It'll you still get a plus low. four to your notice. So if you fail a plus four notice, I woke up. You woke up? I woke up. Yeah, I woke up. You noticed, sweet. So I will deal initiative to all of you. I think that Thaddeus and Ellis, I think negative two to you out of your trait rolls this first, this first round. Oh, because we're waking Perfect. up. Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, we're waking up. So Thaddeus, you're up first. You wake up to Harper holding a Winchester, having just fired it. There's, honest to God, Jackalope standing next to his duffel bag. God what do you do? damn it, Daisy. What is it? Is that? And, and Thaddeus sort of rolls over, grabs uh, his hatchet, and really sort of like half crawls, I guess. Yeah, you're close enough to come at it with an axe, yeah. Ooh. Or your spear, I guess. Yeah, I'll totally do it with my spear, actually. Uh, hey, blows ooh. up. I blew mm-hmm. up. Six on that six. Uh, six on that six. Six on that six. Nice. Uh, that's a 13 to hit it with the spear. Minus two. Minus 13 two. to hit. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, so it's 11. The actual total is negative six when you're attacking this fella. Well, wow. son of a bitch. Uh-huh. <laughs> Shit, that's a good thing I hit. Ain't no wonder I missed. <laughs> What'd you roll? Uh, it was a 13 originally. Minus two is 11. Minus the six. Roll some damage. Uh, the, nice. minus, the minus two is from the trait roll because we are just woke up. So, so it's negative six, negative two, so it's negative minus one because you're tired. So 13, minus eight. Minus oh, five. So, it's still, so, so it's still five. Yeah, yeah. so it's still six. <laughs> then I get uh, <laughs> two There's no way I'm going to hit this thing, by the way. Two to six damage. Nope. Uh, oh, that's a uh, blew it up. up again on damage. I uh, got an eleven damage on Oof, that. Nice. That's got to be over his toughness. Is that a wow. raise over his toughness? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Is he dead? I think. Uh, hey. I Did mean, you skewer him? Caleb's gonna spend a Betty. I think. Oh, he's try to <laughs> <sell>. <laughs> this would be pretty take good. Take away this victory from me if I can wake up. Told you, Jackalope's are real. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking stab it. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, it only got a one on its vigor roll. Nice. Excellent. So. Uh, <laughs> fucking Thaddeus just crawls over <laughs> and stabs this jackalope in one swift motion. He's fought a jackalope or two in his day. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. I think I get it with the, the spear. I stabbed in tight enough. I sort of, you know, shake with it as it's trying to fight. And fucking give it one more forceful thing. And then I sort of pick up and swing it over to, uh, was it? Oh, fucking Daisy's the one who shot. Fucking jackalope. Lucky. Want a midnight snack? Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
I guess I wake up. Uh, I think Thaddeus, you can get a Betty for that exchange. That was pretty good, you know. I'll, I'll take it. I yeah. Accept a Betty. Uh, Harper just kind of looks on. It's another white one. With like, just disbelief in his eyes. What in the hell? And he just kind of looks around. That's a goddamn jackalope. This here is a jackalope. It's a goddamn jackalope. You see its antlers? Now this one has, what, like two, three forks in it or something uh, like that? Uh, probably, How many points is this jackalope? Uh, d- well, is it is it the total points or points per antler? I not think a it, hunter. Well, I guess it's, it's a jackalope. We could decide. It's, it's total not real. Points. Let's it's got, get total points. It's got four total points. Four total points? So that's two on each antler. It's probably a younger one then. I think <laughs> you fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> it's old enough. That we probably don't have to worry about mama anywhere around here tonight. But, uh, yeah. I mean, should be nice and tender. Lucky's uh, licking his lips, and he goes, Jackalope, huh? <laughs> they must be pretty lucky, right? Uh, well, that'd be a hell of a rabbit's foot. I think <laughs> I'm going to take that rabbit's foot. Well, I mean, like, he sets it down for him. I have a way, boys. And then I fucking roll over and go back to sleep. Like, not non-plus. Just don't even care. Do you have a knife on you, Lucky? What do you have? What do you got? Uh, I'm sure. I feel like everyone probably has a knife, at least, right? If you don't, I do. Oh, I've got some knives. Lucky has a knife for sure. At least I don't know some shitty knife, if anything. So you pull out a shitty knife. Yeah. Kneel down. Take off that foot. Yeah. You, you want me to That's skin it. that for you? I'll keep. You can skin it after I'm done with this foot. You sure you don't want me to take off that foot? You know how to use a knife. He uh, shrugs and then says. Yeah, you're probably right. And then he uh, kind of just lobs the dead like this corpse <laughs> at you. By the way, it's like um, jackrabbit size, you know? So it's like a big rabbit. Like fucking 20 pounds, 30 pounds, right? Oof, hell hell yeah. Maybe Holy I don't crap. love it. Maybe I carry it at over. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I'm going to roll to see if I can get this rabbit's foot off in yeah. high quality. Well, Thaddeus. Ooh, mama. Mm, what's that, else? I still don't believe it. But you know, it's right there. That's a that's a seventeen. Damn! I get the hell out of that jackal. Just, but... just one moment, Ellis. You you said you still don't believe it. But it's right there, so I guess I guess it's real. Ellis, I wouldn't lie to my brothers. Guess I won't that's make all. that mistake again. So you take off that rab off the jackalope's foot. Like he chains it in addition to his other rabbit's foot hanging off off of his five shot revolver you need lady. three more uh, a jackalope's foot for the next month or about the next month lucky gives you the great luck edge whoa it's an oh, actual shit. thing this is an actual thing <laughs> yeah, huh? it's an actual thing yeah <laughs> how many feet does it have okay what is the great luck feet yeah. two bennies right now I like to think that for two extra bennies yeah every session yeah. no way yeah. yeah. alright yep. so I freaking just cut this thing's head right off and then I start cooking it <laughs> perfect <laughs> yeah. are they going to sleep oh, should yeah, we save say, it for uh, later I think cook it I'll cook it now we can it. have some save of the me morning. a die we'll shovel it in your mouth yeah I mean sleeping. morning's almost here you almost could just get up and get going now you know as long as you're not going to give us a second fatigue. it's about 3am I think no I'm going back to sleep for a little while <laughs> yeah that's right I'll cook it I'll keep it near the coals it'll be nice and warm when y'all get up just shake my head I say god damn jack a little and I just go to sleep so the campfire fades one to the other we see a fire small fire raging away set by an ex-calvary man Abel near the fire is both him and Cole Marston and Cole's pulling off a pot of beans and dishing up a plate to both of the both of the men here go there Abel Thank you. I think this is the first time, really, uh, that Abel has been not wearing his his full coat. He's sitting near the fire on a mesquite log they've pulled up, and uh, his coat draped over on the ground near his bedroll, and he's down to just uh, down to just his uh, shirt sleeves. Running up his right arm is a spiraling tattoo of a snake. It comes to a, to a head on the back of his right hand with the fangs and the jaw extending onto the, the palm and then the upper side of the hand. And the firelight, as he moves, you can see the gentle kind of lattice work of scars on the right, on the right arm that mar the tattoo, kind of ripple and move, move in the firelight. 
They both sit in silence for a few minutes, just eating. The sound of tin on tin as their forks scrape the plates. Finally, he uh, he raises his head and, and looks towards Cole. Cole, I got something I need to ask. Cole takes a bite of his beans and he stares hard at you. And one of his eyes is all swollen up from where you hit it earlier. Shoot, Judge Man. When we were, oh, 10, maybe 12, there was that animal they found strung up outside the marshal's office. You remember. Stuck to the walls with some kind of nails like somebody was in the middle of skinning it. You remember? I do remember, Abel. And it was a fox. What are you getting at? Fox. Well... They always said it was you what did it. I never knew the truth of it. And I didn't look too hard, to be honest. I just assumed, given your reputation. But I always heard there was something wrong with that fox. So, we're out here in the middle of nowhere. No one you gotta lie to. God knows you can't lie to me. What was that thing? That thing, Abel, he was a fox. Me and Eugene, we used to spend nights in the uh, daddy's office when, uh, you know, him and mama weren't doing so good. And uh, we all thought we'd be deputies when we grew up, you know. Shoot, I got close cold times, but I, I, didn't, pers- I didn't pursue it. But we were holed up in there, and I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't move and my arms they are pinned down but nothing was holding them and my legs they stood there too but nothing was holding them and in that room besides Eugene I just heard a crying in the corner and I couldn't move my head but I saw it out of the corner of my eyes it was a fox sitting there in the corner shaking terrified of what was coming through that door Abel no one believes me Eugene he never woke up for it but a big gangly thing all black and round came through that room he had legs made of bone and nothing else and it took a step not an inch from my face Abel you must think I'm some kind of fool Spinning that story to me. It's not a story, Abel. You said I had no reason to lie, and I ain't lying to you, Abel. No, Cole, I said you ain't had no reason to lie about whether you killed the fox. I didn't ask you to be spinning me no fucking tall tale right now. I didn't I didn't kill the fox, Abel. That some bitch did. And while I lay there, he strung it up, and he nailed it against that wall. Whilst you did it, you mean... You can come up with whatever explanation you want for why you did it. But you did that. There ain't no man walking around black and knobby like you said. Ain't no one knows the truth of it, Abel. I was there. You wasn't. No. No. The heart's desire is to be told some mystery exists. That some force out there is pressing and turning the world against you. There ain't no force. The truth, there is no mystery to it. There's your evil, your wicked heart turning the world around you. And you'll twist and turn it just to see it so you don't have to face the truth. You're the evil in this world. Men been telling tales like that wherever I ride. No matter where I go. I've been in the north, south, Indian nations. It doesn't matter, boy. People tell those stories for one reason. Their hearts cannot handle the wickedness that men bring upon them. We look for explanations. There are none. Don't believe me if you don't want to, Abel. But one day, you're going to be facing something that you can't explain. One day you're going to have to look someone in the eye and tell them 
a tall tale. I hope they believe you. Let's actually just do like a hard cut to the next day when you guys are riding along. Um, opens up on one of you guys, probably Thaddeus, just eating uh, one of the legs of this yeah, thing. Yeah, one, one of them thighs. How how's good it is this, yeah, how good is this jackalope? This actually ain't that bad. Hmm. Well, Thaddeus will eat anything, though. That's I want true. a second opinion on this before I try some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lucky starts shoveling his mouth and goes, Tastes lucky. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? I think I'll stick to my beans. <laughs> Lucy, what the hell are you talking about? It just, it tastes good, all right. Just eat it, Harp. God <laughs> damn. I'll try it. Shit, all right. Today is a hot day, and as you're on the tracks of the Texas Ranger, you are making a little bit of progress, even though the saddles are wearing at you. Um, at one point, as you guys crest a hill that gives you a bit of a vantage point, you can actually see him on his horse headed southwest in the distance. So, I mean, not that you'd be able to take a shot or anything, but at least you know you're on the right trail. Can we put, like, a horse into, like, double time or something like that? Uh, if you wanted to start galloping after him, you definitely could, but if he's paying attention, I mean, he's going to do the same thing. And then at that point, it's like opposed riding rolls. So you, uh, we don't want to do that. Wait. No, you guys aren't good at riding. <laughs> Hold up now. See, uh, there's I'm a not. trick to catching a man on horseback. You want to wear his horse out. You're going to follow slow. Maybe get your horse into a trot. If he notices you, he'll start galloping. You just keep a nice, steady eye on his trail. Make sure you keep an eye on him. His horse will wear out eventually. That's when you kick your horse. Just keep your horse under control. We don't need another incident. Yeah, He's Lucky, definitely going to notice that. Lucky sort of nods over at Ellis and says, No offense, Hart, but I think I'll keep my riding experience to myself. This, <laughs> this ain't riding. This is manhunting. To be fair, Thunder did almost run over a damn jackalope. That'd spook any horse. I guess that's fair. There's a uh, montage of you guys riding over the Colorado countryside, I think southwest. Um, Can it be like a playful montage, like us just like slapping each other's butts while we're running through? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, Shooting gotcha. finger guns at each yeah. other. Yeah, it's it could be a little playful montage for sure. Can we sure. spook this horse with a dead jackalope? <laughs> You can try it, yeah. If you want to pull that break, that'd be a good montage <laughs> moment, yeah. Like, you just throw out back. the dead body in front of the Mustang. Everybody's laughing. He's yeah, nothing. Nothing, <laughs> <laughs> nothing says chasing down mom's killer like a couple of horsing around. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as the as the happy music fades away, I think you guys are once again at your campfire at night, and it's hot outside. So wouldn't we like? But we saw him at some point, right? We saw him at some point. Yeah. Do we see his like camp? Why would we stop? We're going at the same pace. If we like pick up our pace, he's just gonna pick up his pace. Yeah. So we're you, doing just like a slow pursuit and slowly like catching if, up. If to you him. ride into the night, he's gonna ride into the night. If you make camp, he's gonna make camp. I mean, you could do a situation where you guys set up camp and then send a couple people over to uh, jump him in the middle of the night. But I reckon we spend one more day following him on horseback, then tomorrow night. That's when we go. Lucky nods over at Harp. I mean, it looks like we're making ground. We might as well just keep this going. What if he's headed towards more people that are going to help him? I mean, it might be worth the risk. Or nah, he's been out here on his own. We could be walking into a trap. Following the trail of whatever got mom he thinks he left us behind. At this point, I feel like it's safe to say we're definitely walking into a trap. But we want to be rested when we do. Abel? You've made it on a little bit further. You've managed to take a supply trail west, meaning you're going considerably faster than your brothers heading through the wilderness, unbeknownst to you. You're mm-hmm. traveling with coal, and you've made your way into some rocky Colorado terrain. Even though there's a trail that goes through here, it seems like once they hit this rocky trail, they kind of just made their own way through. And so that's sure. what you and Cole are doing. Do you have him in front working on where the direction to go? That way his yeah. horse would get the footing bad first? Bad I think he, first. yeah, he is definitely in front. And if he's going to make his escape anywhere along this trail, this is going to be the spot, right? So Abel is uh, kind of more focused on unwatching Cole to make sure he doesn't start to run for it uh, through these next pieces. But yeah, he's guiding the horses kind of gently through the through the rocks. Do you want to make a notice roll for me? I do. Yeah. Three. Perfect. Minus two? Great, yeah. 
So um, I think all you're able to notice is the cocking of a hammer above you. And as you look up and the camera pans up, you see standing on the rocks, Eugene Marston, brother Cole Marston. What's Eugene look like today, Marshall? Oh, man, he's still got his great bowler hat on. Yeah, uh, He's got uh, a bit of a it's a pretty nice coat. It's a little dirty. Probably could, you know, do to wash it, but. You know, it's still well made, put together, and uh, he's just riding in some some normal slacks, and he pops up from behind one of these rocks. Now wait, just right there, Abel. I think you done made it far enough. I'm uh, I'm here to be taking my brother back, please. Shoo! Look at you, Gene, showing up to save the day. Hey, of course, Cole. You knew I couldn't let you go. Goddamn! Now that's family, Abel. <laughs> it sure is. Eugene, you don't want to be making this mistake. Eugene, this motherfucker, he done hit me earlier. And he points to his eye, and Eugene can see that it's all swollen up. Eugene, like, almost sort of growls, grits his teeth. Now, Abel, I don't think I'm making any mistakes. I think I got you caught unawares with your pants down and my brother in chains. (laughs) Shoot. And I said, I want him back. You are about to interfere with an officer of the law. That is a much more serious crime than any you have committed to this point. Eugene, I ain't in chains, man. He don't. He didn't put me in that. Well, I was just trying to sound. It's a. It's called a figure of speech, Eugene. If that's what you're doing, call it out. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah, Colt. That. No, come on, Abel. (laughs) Abel, listen. Before I left, your little brother. Little Daisy was talking my pa out of being Marshall. So as the way I see it, the whole town done forgot our authority. So I'll just leave. You'll turn your back, I'll take my brother, and you'll never see us again. All right. Abel leans back on uh, leans back on the horse and kind of just loops the reins around the, the saddle horn a bit and uh, just begins slowly pulling off his gloves. All right. You're going to ride out of here with your brother, and I'm never going to see you again. That's right. That's the deal? Eugene sort of like, almost looks a little dumbfounded. Well, well, yeah, that's the way I see it. This man attempted to murder my brother, Eugene. I don't know if I can let that go. Well, well, Cole, we got to be fair and square. I mean, even with the boys... Fair and square, Eugene. Look at Abel, we just... No, nobody died on your side, okay? We had many a follower fall that day, okay? And not a one of them was on yours. Adrian was a real good friend of mine. I, I didn't even see any bullet holes in him. He was he still dead. He owed me $10, Eugene. Well, I, I mean, you're never going to get that back, Cole. I'm sorry. but All right. Eugene, you have me dead to rights. I ain't fool enough to draw on a man who's already got me bare down. That's right. Now you got me. And uh, I admit, you have the uh, the tactical upper hand. So, I will, I will release your brother from my custody, unwillingly, I may add. I do have one request. All right, what's that? It will come as no surprise to you that I do not trust him. So... I would request that you do not arm him until we are well separated by both distance and time. Shoot, that ain't fair at all. Now, Cole? You're going to take his side. I'm not taking his side. Okay, well, let's at least make it a good deal, Eugene. Tell you what, Abel. You hand on over that big iron of yours to Eugene, and we'll ride away, okay? He won't give it to me till after we're gone, but I'd just like to know that I took a little bit of something with of you with me. <laughs> Just something to remember you by. Something to remember you by. Good words, Eugene. Abel uh, considers this for a moment. Listen, I'm letting you go both from a tactical perspective and also because of the respect I have for your father and what he meant for my mother. If you'd like to push it, we can throw down. Fine, fine, Abel. No need for you to beat me twice. 
All right, Eugene, let's get the hell out of here then. Yeah, yeah, Abel, let, uh, let those reins go a little bit. Abel uh, tosses the reins down to the, like, just releases them so they're hanging loose. Cole gives you a snarky smile as he meets up with Eugene, and they start outwards out of the rocks, probably up north, um, on their horses. Man, Eugene, you did it. You did it well. You got him. Cole, I got you. <laughs> we did it, Eugene. I, man, I can't believe it. he must be so... Actually, you know what it is? Middle, you know what it mind. is? Goddamn crows. As the uh, two Marston boys ride away, the uh, camera pushes over their shoulder and starts sliding slowly towards Abel. As it gets close, you see his hand just kind of shake itself loose, and then in one smooth motion, he pulls up the big iron and aims down. With one hand wrapped in the, the mane of his horse, he uses his heels to turn it sideways so he has a better line of shot. The snake tattoo on the back of his hand seems to ripple and bite down as he pulls the trigger. He sighs to himself. Lucky, you know I love you. And he fires. All right, d10, d6 at a plus two. Roll two d10s and then roll 1d6, and then you can replace either the d10s with the d6. Right. Okay, I'll roll d10 number one. So Cole. So that's an eight plus two, that's a 10. And d10 number two, five plus two is a seven. Cole, that's five, six, or 10, 10 damage on Cole. So you shake him and wound him. The bullet goes hard into his back. He screams as he tries to make a riding roll. He gets snake eyes on his riding roll. The horse rears back and he falls down the hill. He's going to make an agility roll in these rocks. It's going to be at a negative two. He fails again and his head hits a rock hard on the way down. He takes another wound as he rolls further down and stops in a clump not quite dead what the shit Abel six blows up Damn. Maybe he so save. seven off the first one <laughs> twelve twelve so as Eugene yells out what the shit Abel his head explodes and his decapitated body lifelessly falls off as his horse runs north Abel <laughs> We deal initiative for you and Cole. <laughs> Cole goes first. Cole rolls around and stands up, holding his head. He's got one black eye and a large gash in the top of it from the rock. It's bleeding. In his back, he's also got a bullet hole wound that as he's facing you, you can see the front of his chest is sort of blown out a little bit. And he's his eyes are just wide as he stares at you. He says... You killed my brother, Abel! Kill my goddamn brother! No, you did, boy. He looks around. He grabs a rock from the ground and comes forward at your mount. 16 damage. I got five toughness. Well, luckily, you got uh, quite a few bennies here. Yeah, yeah. Got quite a few bennies. If you want to spend one to make a soak roll, that's just a vigor roll. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely do that. I got a success. I got a four. I mean, you're still taking one wound, but that's not too bad. So Cole lunges at you and smashes this rock he's grabbed off the ground straight at you. It comes down into your leg and then compresses that next to the horse's saddle, and it gouges your leg pretty hard. Yeah, so the horse the horse rears back from this assault too and yeah. smashes Abel into the into the rocks uh, rocks next to him. Yeah, he spurs the horse forward just a little bit to get a get a little bit of distance and just, just turns and kind of shoots shoots over his shoulder while he rides forward. Make an attack. That's a five. Do some damage. Six seven. You shoot him as you as you ride ahead and shake him. He uh. He grasps that rock harder and just says, I'm a fucking kill you, Abel! 
I will kill you! And he runs after you. Um, I think since your horse is going considerably faster than him on foot, he's gonna have to like run to get there, which will give him a negative two to his fighting roll. He rolled far enough to come after you, and he runs up on a ledge to the right of you, and then just jumps off, bringing this rock straight for you. He failed. He's going to spend his second many, the first one he spent being unshaken, to re-roll, and he still misses. He jumps off, and you pull up your horse as he lands directly in front of you, like cracking the rock on the ground. I'm going to shoot. I'd like to roll for the, the result of the roll before I describe what I do. Perfect. Let's do it. Five, eight, plus one is nine. Uh, that's exactly enough to kill. As Cole hurdles past, uh, swinging the rock, Abel wheels his horse around expertly and uses the rear haunches of the horse to knock Cole off balance, uh, and he falls back falls back against the rocks, almost into a sitting position. Abel pulls the pulls the horse back, takes a quick aim, and fires off a shot, which hits him in the hits him in the stomach, explodes out the back in a little splinter with that <gasps> traditional little pew as the as the bullet ricochets off into the distance. Abel sits on the horse calmly for just a moment, pistol still raised, waiting to see if Cole is able to continue the fight or not. He is not able to continue the fight. He's sitting there with his guts bleeding out, and uh, he stares down his chest and then back up to you. Shoot, Abel, you could have just, just let us get away, Abel. Abel ignores him. He... Slides down easily off his horse, lightly onto his boots, and uh, walks several steps away with the horse before looping its reins gently over around a rock to, to keep it still. And while Cole continues to babble, he walks towards the Could, body of Eugene. You didn't, need to, you didn't need to do any of that. You didn't need to do any of that. But here we are now. <laughs> Abel kneels down next to, next to Eugene's headless corpse and uh, rolls him over. He reaches inside his pocket for uh, a watch that Eugene always carried with him. Yeah, he finds it. He pulls it out and uh, starts walking back. Starts walking back towards Cole as he just slowly turns it to, to look at it in the in the light. Is that why you taking that, Abel? That doesn't mean anything to you. Abel walks up to him. And then uh, kind of s- squats down on uh, squats down on his boots and looks him in the eye. Cole, this will be the last thing you see, and I just want to say thank you for giving me something to remember you by. He puts the watch in his pocket, places a hand on uh, on Cole's forehead, and kind of bows his head for a moment, and then mounts up and rides away. Thanks for listening to episode four of Sounds Like Crows. Please leave us any feedback you have either on our Facebook page or our website. Alternatively, you can tweet at us at Sounds of Crows. Thaddeus is played by Marshall Sims. Abel is played by Isaac Sunstead. Ellis is played by Alex Horrell. Lucky is played by Cameron Day. And Harper is played by Cameron Reed. That's all we got until next Monday, folks. Hopefully, we'll see you then.